Now we will understand about the Ramsar Convention, very, very important from the point of view of examination. Right. Ramsar Convention, officially known as Convention on Wetlands of International Importance. So it is an international treaty aimed at conservation and sustainable use of wetlands. <music>
So this particular convention, Ramsar Convention, it recognizes uh, around 20, 40, sorry, 42 types of wetlands. So each uh, with its distinct, distinct characteristic, right? So basically, there are uh, three major categories and 42 uh, minor, minor categories. <clears throat> so basically, the five major ca categories in this uh, 42 are marine wetlands, which include coastal lagoons, rocky shores, and the coral reefs. This is one category. Second one is estuarine wetlands, encompassing deltas, tidal marshes, and mangrove swamps. Third one is uh, lacustrine wetlands found in lakes. Fourth one is riverine wetlands associated with rivers and their flood, pl flood plains. Fifth one is uh, polystyrene wetlands including marshes, swamps, and bogs. So these are the five categories, important categories when it comes to the 42 types of wetlands. Right. Now we will try and understand the significance of, uh, significance of the wetlands. So basically, these are wetlands, these ecosystems are found at the meeting point of terrestrial and aquatic habitat. So basically, these ecosystems are peculiar for their nature of, they are the meeting points of terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. Right. So here, one important character is, uh, characteristic is, they are known for uh, high bi bi biological productivity. So they are known for, wetlands are known for high biological productivity. High biological productivity and, and also, not only that, they are well known for biodiversity, lot of biodiversity. Right. So try to uh, remember these points. Next is, uh, they provide uh, crucial services to humanity, play a crucial uh, pivotal role in hydrological cycle. So yesterday itself we have understood various cycles. So they play an important role in the hydro hydrological cycle by receiving, storing and releasing water, thus supporting the diverse flora and fauna. Right. <clears throat> so basically similarly they are essential regulators of pollution and nutrients, uh, contributing sig significantly to bio-geochemical nutrient cycling and acting as reservoirs of uh, global soil carbon. Right. So basically, they also act as the uh, sinkholes of carbon or <coughs> they also act as the carbon sinks. Right. They also uh, act as the carbon carbon sinks so this is these are one uh, some of the important activities or uh, important services that are being provided by the wetlands right similarly they support uh, fish and rice cultivation so in this way they provide offer food security or provide food security for numerous people existing on the earth so when we understand the significance of wetlands uh, the significance can be summarized into uh, three points that are maintaining maintaining hydrological cycle just now we have understood so it plays an important role by uh, by collecting storing and releasing water so it in this way it plays a crucial role in hydrological cycle hydrological cycle so through this function it prevents floods this particular wetlands prevent floods prevent floods and also provide water during the crucial times and in that way they provide water security also water security also next important aspect is carbon storage they also store uh, environmental carbon and they store carbon and reduce the effect of uh, reduce the greenhouse gas effect so in that way they also reduce the impacts of climate change all right next is they are a unique ecosystem so they are a distinct ecosystem acting as carbon sink but also releasing methane so their net climate impact depends on the management and uh, land atmosphere exchange dynamic so basically these are the significant features of wetlands 
Now we will try and understand the various service services that are provided by the wetlands. So we I try to categorize and point try to put point wise those particular services. So first category of services are provisional services. Those are food. So basically the wetlands are very good source of fish and various types of roots etc are also being collected from the wetland. So basically they are source of food. So fish and the grains are collected from the wetlands. Similarly, they provide fresh water. Uh, they are sources of fiber and uh, fuel. So <coughs> logs and uh, fuel wood can be collected from the wetla uh, wetlands, including fodder for animals. Uh, similarly, biochemicals. So medicinal uh, resources der are der derived from the wetland flora and fauna. Next one is regulating services. Uh, climate regulation so they are act both act as sources and sinks of greenhouse gases especially carbon dioxide influencing local and regional climates similarly water regulation we have just seen they collect the they collect the water they store the water and they release the water they also improve the water quality and they recharge groundwater right help mitigate floods and storm impacts Next is pollution control. They also uh, control pollution. So they retain, recover and remove excess nutrients and pollution uh, in the, from the inflowing uh, water. And in, the, in that way, they contribute to water quality and in, indirectly they are acting as the water treatment plants. Next are cultural services. So they are uh, spiritually, they are important. So they are associated with the spiritual aspects when it comes to Hinduism, etc. And the recreational services, they offer op opportunities for wildlife uh, tourism and also ecotourism. Ecotourism. So these are some of the aspect services of the wetlands. So try to remember them. They might come as a point in the prelims question. Right. These are also important for mains. There may be a question in the mains about the wetlands and the various types or categories of services provided by wetlands right the last one is supporting services so supporting services are they take part in soil formation bio geochemical cycling also they also contribute to bio geochemical cycling similarly and the last and most important service is biodiversity so they hold a lot of biodiversity and they maintain biodiversity Right. So they also provide various uh, provide habitats to various migratory species and uh, especially birds. And uh, they also home to lot. They are also source of lot of bio uh, biological production. Right. <coughs> so in all these ways, the wetlands are serving, doing a great service to human beings. Right. Next one is uh, vulnerability and impact assessment of wetlands. To climate change. So basically, we have seen the the wetlands are facing a lot of challenges, including the anthropogenic anthropogenic factors because human being is uh, human beings are increasingly interfering and uh, uh, destroying the wetlands. Similarly, there is a threat of climate change. So because of especially because of these two reasons, they are facing a lot of threats. Right. So climate, basically climate change poses a significant challenge to wetlands. We have seen this one. So there is a disturbance in the rainfall. Rainfall. So basically there is a disturbance in the hydrological cycle when uh, due to climate change. So because of this reason, the wetlands need a water source. They need a source. I mean, the water needs to be flown into the wetlands at particular times at, at some point of time some point of time so they need water so because of climate change there is a reduction in the rate uh, rainfall rainfall rate so because of this reason also the wetlands are facing uh, challenges and they are degrading other one is other climate related uh, very i mean factors are there in, uh, in, including increase in temperature and uh, evaporation altered evaporation i mean the evaporation rate is becoming more and more so these kind of threats also challenging the wetlands.
some of the examples that are impacting the wetlands are altered hydrology so there are changes in the hydrological system second one is wildlife stress so stress on the wetlands is increasing because the water uh, the available number of water bodies those are decreasing so there is an increasing th stress on the existing wetlands next is pest and disease spread so pest pests are spreading and diseases are spreading these are also impacting the wetlands next one is natural disasters so natural disasters uh, disasters uh, disasters like flooding landslides avalanche and even uh, earthquakes so, so these kind of these kinds of disasters are impacting the wetlands next one is soil erosion so <coughs> soil erosion it is increasing day by day and this is also threatening the existence existing existence of wetlands next is water resource impact so changes in the hydrological cycle and uh, changes in the quantity and the quality of the water so these are also impacting the wetlands next is fire risk so whenever the uh, fire fire accidents are there on the in the forest so the biomass whatever that is there in the wetlands also it is also being burned so in that way also these wetlands are facing threats next is coastal erosion so coastal erosion the, it is damaging the uh, wetlands so these are some of the examples of threats faced by the wetlands next one is ecosystem damage so damage to coastal systems such as coral reefs and mangroves so these are also affecting the wetlands in a negative way right so some of the measures that can be taken to protect and conserve the wetlands are so protect and restore productive wetland system we need to protect and we need to restore the uh, uh, existing wetland system so for that system only we have ramsar convention and we are the wetlands are declared as uh, wetlands of international importance under the ramsar convention convention and protective measures are being taken to uh, protect those particular wetlands next one is improve the health of important wetland habitats like uh, peatlands flood plains and mountain lakes so improve these uh, uh, these wetland wetlands also investing green infrastructure projects for wetland resilience so the it is asking to invest in the green projects that are working for the conservation of the wetlands next one is safeguard coastal wetlands such as salt mar salt marshes marshes and mangroves conserve and uh, conserve and sustainably manage inland wetlands so basically inland wetlands are being converted converted uh, into fish ponds so they are increasingly being used for aquaculture culture or they are emptied for agriculture for agriculture so because of all these reasons they are declining so it is uh, asking that conserve and sustainably manage inland wetlands and uh, last uh, rec recommendation is identify and protect areas <coughs> with high biodiversity and ecological significance so we have to identify and protect the highly biodiversity regions uh, and which have ecological significance so these are some of the suggestions uh, through which we can protect and conserve the wetlands right now we will understand about the ramsar convention very very important from the point of view of examination right ramsar convention officially known as convention on wetlands of international importance so it is an international treaty aimed at conservation and sustainable use of wetlands so this is its major objective it is established the convention was established in 1971 uh, it's it provides framework for countries to designate and manage wetlands of international importance also they are also known as ramsar ramsar sites right the objectives are uh, the main object objectives of the Ra ramsar convention include promoting the wise use of wetlands so promoting the wise use of wetlands ensuring their conservation and sustainable management right and recognizing the importance ecological cultural and socio economic value of the wetlands so these are some of the major objectives of the ramsar convention so almost more than 170 countries have rat ratified and adopted this particular uh, convention 
Similarly, associated with Ramsar Convention, there is a Montreox record. So what, what is this Montreox record? So Montreox, Montreox record is, it is a register of wetland sites under the Ramsar Convention. So the uh, particular wetlands are registered in this uh, record, which are facing, which are facing serious ecological degradation or at the risk of losing their ecological character. So because, I mean, the record is basically, record is holding the names of the wet, wetlands, which are facing serious threats, serious th threats about the existence or they are losing their ecological character. So in this uh, situations, the particular uh, uh, wetland is listed under this particular record. So earlier best example is the Chilka Lake. Chilka Lake, which is at the Odisha, uh, which is uh, in the, situated in Odisha state. So because of the increasing threats, this particular lake has been registered, put under the Montreal, Montreal record. So after the conservation measures, uh, when the uh, ecosystem of the wetland has improved, so this uh, Chilka particular name of the Chilka Lake has been withdrawn from this Montreal record, right? <clears throat> so purpose of this particular record is Montreal Montreal record is it serves as a tool for identifying wetlands in need of priority attention. So to I mean to alert the respective nations or countries that this particular wetland is face, facing severe challenges to alert the particular nations, this record is useful. So this is the this is all about the Ramsar Convention and the Montreal record. So try to remember the facts. These facts might be asked in the examination. Right now we will see some of the important uh, wetlands in India. Uh, right as per as far as possible, I try to introduce them so that you can remember some facts about these particular wetlands. So first one is Chilika Lake. So it is located uh, in the Odisha. It stands as a testament to the state's, uh, state's natural splendor. So the area is 1,110 kilometer, 1,100 square kilometers, right? So it is holding important importance, right? So <clears throat> it is also home for various migratory birds. Yes, yesterday also when we were studying the. Uh, <clears throat> Wildlife sanctuaries, we have studied about Chilka Lake. So basically, when it comes to migratory birds, this place, Chilka, Lakes, uh, Chilka Lake, holds a lot of importance. Right. So basically, the, the threats faced by this particular lake are, lake are habitat destruction, pollution from various sources, and unsustainable fishing practices. So these all these are acting as threats to this particular wetland all right next one next one is sundarbans we have also studied uh, sufficiently about this particular wetland so basically this wetlands basically these are coastal wetlands coastal wetlands uh, these are home to majestic bengal tiger and also associate there is lot of associated uh, fauna is there so these are also home to various migratory birds right so basically they span across India and Bangladesh. They are also recognized as UNESCO World Heritage Site. So basically it is a unique ecosystem where land and water intertwine, giving rise to labyrinth of waterways and dense mangrove forest. So right, this is also one of the important wetlands when it comes to India. Right. So it is not only provide vital buffer against coastal, coastal erosion, right? Basically, it is inhabited by uh, salt uh, tolerant mangroves. We have seen one of the important species is Sundari. So through this uh, species only, the name Sundarbans has come. So they provide a wide, vital buffer against coastal erosion and uh, storm surges, but also serve as a sanctuary for a diverse array of flora and uh, fauna. Uniquely, uh, uniquely adapted to the challenging conditions of the area. So one of the best examples is uh, Sundarbans Bengal Tiger. So try to remember these points about this particular wetland. So next one is East Kolkata wetlands, right? <clears throat> so the area 12,500 hectares, it is spread across 12,500 hectares. 
so it is uh, famous for its treatment natural treatment of water treatment of water so try to remember the key aspect about the east kolkata wetlands right they act as the natural wastewater treatment plan so most uh, the this is the most striking striking feature of the east kolkata wetlands so through the network of ponds channels and marshes the wetlands act as a giant bio biofilter purifying the city's sewage and in industrial wastewaters before they flow into hogli river so this is the important characteristics of characteristic of this particular uh, wetland east kolkata wetland right so it also uh, this uh, indigenous process not only mitigates pollution but also help recharge groundwater and uh, sustain agricultural productivity so these are the various services provided by the east kolkata wetlands right next one is nalsovar nalsarovar bird sanctuary so this is also a vibrant landscape which is located in gujarat india right so it is a nalsarovar uh, nalsarovar is there it is the wetland so it is also demarcated uh, demarcated as a bird sanctuary bird sanctuary right right the when we see the characteristic features of this particular wetland so it is characterized by mosaic marshes mud flats and the shallow ponds it uh, creating a idyllic haven for avian life so it is the particular wetland is well suited for the avians birds right next is uh, ular lake so it is very very famous uh, when it comes to jammu and kashmir ular lake uh, comes to our mind right so it is uh, nestled amidst majestic landscapes of jammu and kashmir kashmir it uh, it it uh, serves as a shimmering jewel when it comes to the jammu and kashmir right so uh, basically there are many people in jammu and kashmir they are dependent on the bular lake they are surviving by depending on this particular lake right basically the lake holds variety of rich uh, rich rich variety of flora and uh, fauna uh, fauna so it is home to numerous species of fish including uh, famous ular trout right so people are dependent on the this particular fish they catch the fish and they uh, they use it as their livelihood major livelihood activity right so basically ular lake plays a pivotal role in the region's environmental balance right so it all acts as a natural reservoir regulating the water flow and mitigating the risk of floods downstream so basically it's it uh, the ular lake acts as a natural reservoir by collecting the uh, whatever the water coming from the uh, himalayan rivers right so basically the wetlands surrounding the lake they serve as a buffer against the soil erosion soil erosion and provide vital groundwater recharge so these are the some of the important aspects associated with the ula ular lake next one is kolleru lake so it is uh located in andhra pradesh right so it is one of the largest freshwater lakes in india right it has profound ecological significance it serves as a vital sanctuary for diverse array of flora and fauna so kolleru kolleru lake it is located in the andhra pradesh state next one is uh renuka wetland so it is located in himachal pradesh himachal pradesh so it emerges uh, from tranquil oasis of natural beauty so basically this particular lake is known for natural beauty all right uh, remember redika wetland it is located in himachal pradesh right next one is ashtamudi lake so it is uh, located in kerala so it is also very very important it is hosting lot of uh, avian population right and it has lot of cultural significance right so it is one of the important wetlands in india right next one is uh, point kalimur coastal wetland it is located in tamil nadu it is also 
whom to i mean it is also declared as uh, point kalimor wildlife and uh, bird sanctuary so it is also home to variety of wildlife wildlife including birds right remember point kalimor coastal wetland it is located in uh, tamil nadu next one is uh, harike wetland so it is located uh, at the heart of punjab right so it is one of the largest wetlands in northern india so remember harike wetland it is located in the state of punjab next one is loktak lake so when we were studying the wildlife sanctuary or national park so we we have studied about this uh, loktak lake so it is located in uh, manipur so it is known for kumdis kumdis so these basically the kumdis are floating floating organic matter organic matter right so basically the peculiar species sangai deer sangai deer is present in this particular loktak lake so loktak lake is renowned for its unique floating islands known as kumdis which are heterogeneous masses of vegetation soil and organic matter so due to various reasons including increasing human interference and uh, restrictions on the water flow because of uh, the construction of uh, uh, hydroelectric power projects so the water flow into this particular uh, lake is loktak lazy lake is uh, reducing being reduced so because of that reason the organic matter the fumdes whatever they are so they are unable to draw their nutrients or are unable to come come to upward so because of the, uh, this reasons the uh, loktak lake is facing lot of threats right so try to remember these points so there is a, uh, there are uh, various hydro electro uh, electrical projects are being built so because of those projects this particular loktak lake is facing challenges right next one is uh, somgo lake so it is located in the state of sikkim so it is a glacier wetland <coughs> so glacier wetland glacier wetland means so the water whatever the water coming to coming into this wetland is through the melting of ice melting of ice right so not only ecological ecological significance this particular wetland is also having certain cultural significance also cultural significance also right try to remember these points so similarly <coughs> it is located in the alpine uh, alpine climatic region alpine climatic region right so try to remember these points about sumulak next one is pong dam lake so it is located in the himachal pradesh so it is basically it is uh, uh, i mean this uh, wetland has been uh, formed due to uh, the pong dam on the bias river so uh, a dam has been built on the bias river so because of that dam this particular wetland has been emerged right so it is the one of the largest man made lakes in india so it is one of the uh, man made uh, wetlands in india so try to remember this point next one is vembanad lake so it is also uh, located in the uh, state of kerala right it is a wetland formed by backwaters backwaters right so the vembanad uh, 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 vembanad lake so it is located or situated in kerala so it is formed due to the backwaters right backwaters so try to remember this point similarly it is interconnected with canals lagoons and estuaries <coughs> that wave through the coastal plains of kerala so the vembanad lake is a combination of all these aspects canals lagoons and estuaries so all these are interconnected to form vembanad lake right so these are some of the wetlands i thought are important now we will see some of the wetlands which are facing threats they are facing threats due to various uh, various factors whatever they may be uh, the anthropo uh, anthropogenic uh, interference or due to climate climate change also so they are facing wetlands are facing a lot of threats 
try to we will try to see the important wetlands which are uh, facing threats first one is bhuj wetland it is located in madhya pradesh similarly chilka lake we have studied it is located in um, odisha next similarly hussein sagar it is uh, situated or located in the heart of the hyderabad state hyderabad city hyderabad so it is uh, located in telangana state <coughs> next one kolleru lake we have studied it is located in the state of andhra pradesh so it is one of the largest fresh fresh water lakes in india next one is pulikat lake so it is located in state of tamil nadu so it is a pulikat lake is a salt water lake salt water lake right ashtamudi lake we have seen so it is located in kerala next one is hovai lake so it is <coughs> located in the next one is uh, gudavi uh, gudavi uh, wetland it is located in karnataka state <coughs> Uh, next one is Kutch coastland. It is also the Kutch region. The coastline acts as a wetland, so it is uh, there in um, Gujarat state. Next is Pichola Lake. It is located in Rajasthan. Next, uh, another important wetland in uh, Rajasthan is Sambhar Lake. We have studied about this when we were studying the uh, wildlife sanctuaries. Next are Harike Lake. We have seen just now Harike Lake. It, it is located in Punjab. Similarly, Rupar Lake is also there. It is also located. in punjab next another important lake sukna lake it is located in the city of chandigarh right <coughs> next are pong dam lake it is uh, located in Him himachal pradesh uh, including chandratal so all these lakes are located in the himachal pradesh uh, dal lake and ular lake we, ular lake we have seen and uh, along with that dal lake they are located in the union territory of jammu and kashmir somariri so this is also one of the important wetlands it is located in the ladakh region right so loktak lake we have seen it is located in manipur rudrasagar lake so it is located in tripura sundarbans we have seen it is located in west bengal and also the east kolkata wetlands it is also located in the outskirts of kolkata city and located in west bengal so these are some of the wetlands which are facing lot of threats so try to remember the names of these wetlands and uh, the place where they exist the city name of sorry the name of the state in which state they are located right there is a chance that these uh, i mean lakes and associated names of the names of the associated states might be asked in the examination right now we will see some of the questions uh, that are being asked from the topic of wetlands so first question it is asked in 2022 the question is if rain forests and tropical forests are the lungs of the earth then surely wetlands function as the kidneys so this is a statement next the question is which of the following functions of wetlands best reflects the above statement so the statements are the water cycle in wetlands invo involves surface runoff subsoil uh, percolation and evaporation next one is algae form of nutrient base upon which fish crustaceans mollusks birds reptiles and mammals thrive wetlands third option is wetlands play a vital role in maintaining sedimentation balance and soil stabilization fourth one is aquatic plants absorb heavy metals and excess nutrients so here the best option all are the functions of the wetlands but uh, the statement the phrase which has given in the exam so for that the third option it suits well so here the wetland wetlands have been described as the kidneys of the earth so which uh, which uh, statement uh, um, i mean substantiates substantiates that uh, uh, <laughs> phrase so the wetlands play a vital role in maintaining sedimentation balance and the soil stabilization so because of that reason the wetlands can be considered as the kidneys of the uh, earth so the correct option is option c uh, they uh, they role in maintaining sedimentation and uh, balancing the soil stabilization next question is so it is asked in 2014 so <coughs> here a list of wetlands is given and uh, confluence of rivers is given so you should be thorough with this aspects also first one is harike wetland <coughs> confluence of bias and sutlej sutlej river 
Next one is Kiyoladio uh, Ghana National Park. It is located in Rajasthan. Confluence of Banas and Chambal Rivers. Next one is Koleru Lake. Confluence of Musi and Krishna Rivers. So it is a question is which of the above pairs is correctly matched. So here we can see that Koleru Lake, if you see, it is a coastal. It is <coughs> formed due to backwaters. Though it is a freshwater lake, basically the source is backwaters. So the it, it is not formed due to the confluence of Musi and Krishna. So it is basically the Musi and Krishna meet in the Telangana state of Telangana itself. So it the both rivers won't go till the coast of uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh. So it is the incorrect answer. Kiola Dio Ghana National Park. So it is basically it is located in the desert region of desert region of uh, Rajasthan. So basically the mentioned rivers, uh, rivers here, confluence of ba uh, Banas and Chambal. So basically Chambal is uh, flowing uh, and it is uh, it is going to merge with the uh, Yam Ganga Yamuna uh, river system. So basically this option also becomes uh, not correct. So it is this option is incorrect. So Harikai wetlands. It is formed by hurricane wetlands are formed by the uh, the <coughs> confluence of BS and the Sutlej rivers. So it is formed due to a dam built on the particular rivers. So the dam built on the BS rivers. So here the cor correct option is option A only one. So only the match only one is correct. So right. So what the question says the question says you should be thorough with the these kinds of aspects about the wetland also right so this is all for today thank you thank you for joining the lecture uh, see you next time until then have a good day bye see you next time